This is a tutorial on inverse variation. An inverse variation equation looks similar to a direct variation equation. You may remember direct variation equations. They look like y is equal to k times x, where k is our variation constant or our constant of variation. It's just some number that gives us a relationship between y and x. Now an inverse variation equation is similar except we have y is equal to k, again our constant of variation, divided by x. Here x is in our denominator. Frequently inverse variation equations are also written as y times x is equal to k. And we get that equation just by multiplying both sides of our first equation by x. Now inverse variation equations can be used to show a relationship between x and y. Now typically they're written as y is equal to k over x, or sometimes they're written as y times x is equal to k. Now if we're given a point, here we're given 4, 24, and 3h, these are values of an inverse variation. So we can find our inverse variation equation, and the first thing we have to do is find our variation constant or find k. Now to do this we just take our first point 424 and we plug in 4 for x into our standard equation and we plug in 24 for y into our standard equation and that'll give us k. So if we do this we'll have 24 times 4 and that's equal to our k, all from using this equation. Now 4 times 24 is 96. So we have k is equal to 96. So our variation equation then, or our inverse variation equation, would be y is equal to 96 over x. Now that we have our equation, we can use it to solve for h, or our second point here, this 3 comma h. All we do is take this equation and plug in 3 for x. If I do this, I'll have y is equal to 96 divided by x, but in this case that's 3. 96 divided by 3 well that's 32. So if our y is 32 and h is our y coordinate, that means h is 32. Let's try this again. Here we have 4 and 1 half and h comma 4 are all values of a direct variation this time. Well a direct variation equation that looks like y is equal to k times x. Well we're going to follow the same steps. We're going to plug in 4 for x, and we're going to plug in 1 half for y. If I do this, I'll have 1 half, well that's equal to our k times our x, which in this case is 4. So I have 1 half is equal to k times 4. If I want to solve this for k, I just divide both sides by 4. And I'm going to get k is equal to 1 eighth. So now that I know that k is equal to 1 eighth, my direct variation equation then is y is equal to 1 eighth x. Now we look at our second point here. We have the point h and 4, and we want to find what h is. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to plug in 4 for y. And whatever we get for an x value will be our h. So if I do this, I'll have 4, because that's y, and that's equal to 1 eighth x. Now to get x alone, I need to multiply both sides by 8. My 8 and my 1 eighth will cancel, and I'll find out that x is equal to 32, which means h is equal to 32. So finding the variation constant 
we're finding your equation of an inverse or a direct variation is basically the same steps. You just plug in a point and solve for your k. Once you have your k or your variation constant, you can use this equation to solve for any other location on this function. Now let's compare the graphs of a direct variation and an inverse variation. Here we have y is equal to 2x and y is equal to 2 over x. And then we're given several x values and we're going to plug these in to both of these equations and solve for our y values. If we do our direct variation first, I have y is equal to 2x. If I plug in 4 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 times 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8, so our y is equal to 8. Now, if I were to plug in 1 for x the same way, I would have 2 times 1, and that's just 2. If I were to plug in 1 half for x, I'd have 1 half times 2, and that's just 1. If I were to plug in 1 fourth for x, I'd have 2 times 1 fourth, and that's equal to 1 half. If I plug in negative 1 fourth and multiply that by 2, well then I'm going to get 1 half again, but since this is negative, I'm going to have a negative 1 half. If I plug in a negative 1 half for x and multiply that by 2, I'll have a negative 1. Plug in negative 1 for x and we'll have negative 2. And if I plug in negative 4 for x, I'll have a negative 8. So we have a bunch of x and y coordinates, and we can plot these. Well, my x is 4, my y is 8. My x is 1, my y is 2. Well, my x is 1 half, my y is 1. My x is 1 fourth, my y is 1 half. Negative 1 fourth, I get 1 half. Negative 1 half, I get a negative 1. Negative 1, I have a negative 2 for y. And negative 4, I have a negative 8. I can connect these points with a straight line and the graph of my direct variation will look something like that. Notice this is a straight line or a linear relationship and the direct variation passes through the origin or the point zero, zero. Now let's try our inverse variation. Here we have y is equal to 2 over x. Or I can rewrite this as y times x is equal to 2. Now if I plug in 4 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by 4. And that's equal to 1 half. If I plug in 1 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by 1, and that's just 2. If I plug in 1 half for x, I have y is equal to 2 divided by 1 half. y is equal to 2 divided by 1 half. Well, when you divide by a fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 times the reciprocal of 1 half is 4. If I plug in 1 fourth for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by 1 fourth. And that's equal to 8. If I plug in a negative 1 fourth for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by a negative 1 fourth, and that'll give me a negative 8. Negative 1 half for x will give me a negative 4. If I plug in negative 1 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 divided by negative 1, and that's just negative 2. And if I plug in a negative 4 for x, I'll have 2 divided by negative 4, or negative 1 half. So let's plot these points. I have x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 1 half. x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. x is equal to 1 half and y is equal to 4. And when x is equal to 1 fourth, I have y is equal to 8. On the negative side, if I have a negative 1 fourth, I have a negative 8. Negative 1 half, I have a negative 4. 
When x is negative 1, I have negative 2 for y. And when x is negative 4, I have a negative 1 half. And the graph of my inverse variation looks something like that. Now notice when we have a positive x value, if our x value is very large, then the denominator here gets very large, and that makes our y value get very small. When our x value is very small, that makes our denominator here very small, and that makes our y value get very big. And the same thing happens on the negative side, just with negative numbers. Also notice that the inverse variation graph never touches the origin, never passes through the origin, and you never have an x value of zero. Because if you had an x value of zero, that would make our denominator here equal to zero. And then this function would be undefined. So now let's talk about identifying direct and inverse variations. Here we're given three tables worth of values. Now if we have a direct variation, that means that we can fit these points into the form y is equal to k times x. Now k is constant. So as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Now if we have an inverse variation, we have y is equal to k divided by x. Now since we're dividing a constant k by x, as x gets bigger, the denominator of this fraction gets bigger, which means our y is going to get smaller. So now let's look at these charts. Our first one, we have x and y coordinates, and our x is getting bigger by plus 1 each time. So as our x gets bigger, we look at our y values, and our y values are going from 5 to 10 to 15. So our y values are getting bigger. Now since our y values are getting bigger, that means that this may be a direct variation, but it cannot be an inverse variation. If this is a direct variation, then if our x's are getting bigger by the same amount, then our y values have to get bigger by the same amount. When we go from 5 to 10, this is an increase of 5. When we go from 10 to 15, this is an increase of 5. That means that this is a direct variation, because we're increasing by the same amount in y values, as we increase the same amount in x values. Now let's look at our second example. Here we have x values of 1, 2, and 3. And again, these are increasing by 1 each time. My y values are 36, 18, and 12. So as x increases, our y is decreasing. Since our y is decreasing, that means this may be an inverse variation but it cannot be a direct variation. The way to check if this is an inverse variation is to rearrange this into y times x is equal to k. That means that if I multiply y and x, I should get the same number each time. If I multiply 1 times 36, this is 36. 2 times 18, that's 36. 3 times 12, that's also 36. So this is an inverse variation because these numbers multiply together to get the same k value of 36. Now let's look at our last example. Here we have x values of 3, 4, and 5. Again, these are increasing by 1 each time. My y values are 20, 16, and 12. These are decreasing. So because these are decreasing, that means this cannot be a direct variation, but it may be an inverse variation. And again, to check this, we use the form y times x is equal to k. If I multiply x and y, I should get the same number each time. So 3 times 20, that's 60. 4 times 16, that's 64. And 5 times 12, well, that's 60. 
but we have a 60, a 64, and a 60, which means this is not a direct variation and this is not an inverse variation. This is neither. Now the last thing we have to talk about are combined and joint variations. If we said z varies directly with x and inversely with y, well, if z varies directly with x, we could write that as z is equal to k times x, because this is a direct variation equation. We're just substituting z for y, and x is still just x. Now, if we said z varies inversely with y, that would mean z is equal to k over y. Now if we combine these, we have the same k value, and we keep that k value. Our x is in the numerator for our direct variation equation, and it's in the numerator for our joint variation, or our combined variation. And then lastly, our y, since it's an inverse, is in the denominator, and it's in the denominator here. So all we've done is combine a direct variation and an inverse variation together as one equation, where we have z is equal to k, our constant of variation, times x divided by y. Now let's look at our second example. Here we have a varies jointly with b and c. Now if you hear that a varies jointly with two numbers or two variables, that means they're both direct variations. So if I had a direct variation of a and b, that's a is equal to k times b. And if I had a direct variation with a and c, that means a is equal to k times c. If I combine these, then I just get a is equal to k times bc. I'm just combining the two equations. So if we said that w varies jointly with x and y and inversely with the square of z, what would this equation look like? Well, we always have our constant of variation. So for the first half, if we have w varies jointly with x and y, that would mean w is equal to k times x times y, just like in our second example. Now, if w varies inversely with the square of z, that means we have w is equal to k over the square of z, so z squared. Now, if I combine these into one equation, that would mean w is equal to k times xy all over z squared. So that's how you can use several variations in a single equation. And that also completes the tutorial on inverse variation.